Today I'm going to talk about the three worst things that I did to try to treat my back pain. As many of you have read in Gift of Injury, my first encounter with back pain, I was young, I was like 15 years old. Over this time, like many of you out there, you've tried different things and it would work temporarily. I remember one of the first times I hurt my back, going to the chiropractor was the fix for me and it worked. So be it. That's great. Chances are, if you're watching this video, these things do not work now or they no longer work. For those that don't know, my name is Brian Carroll. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm a McGill Method certified provider, having power lifted for over 21 years and ending on a high note of being the first person to squat over 1,300 pounds. I now work with people all over the world from both a virtual standpoint and in person here in Jacksonville, Florida with injury, resilience, and performance enhancement. I'm not giving you medical advice. For more information, go to PowerRackStrength.com. Thank you so much. Enjoy this video. Instead of addressing the cause, which I knew, I knew I was just so strong that I didn't need to address the cause. I had to be broken down. I met Dr. McGill in 2013, and I had to change a lot of the things that I was doing. So the three worst things that I ever did to my back was, number one, I remember this pretty clearly because I went to the pain management doctor and I got an epidural. So I got a series of three shots. The first one was an epidural, and this helped for a little bit of time. And then for whatever reason, we tried a facet injection, which I don't think was a cause of my pain. It might have been later on after injecting it. Then the last one was a nerve root block and that really didn't do much either. With that said, injections can help at the appropriate time, but what I was doing was I was getting my injection and I was going right into lifting, right into lifting and not giving myself any time. So I'd be numb from the shot. I'd go get my shot, go home and eat, and then I'd go train. As you can see on here, lifting, this is 2013, right after my injection, I'd be deadlifted the same day, not giving the medicine any time to work, not removing the cause of pain, which was compression and flexion. And I just needed to take some time off from liftings. I don't recommend doing that, getting a shot than just going to train through it. If you need to get a shot, you need to rest and recover and follow the steps in back mechanic and truly get past it instead of just treating it with the shot. Shots are useful at times. Sometimes you need them to detect the specific level or mechanism of pain. Other times are just a band-aid, which further will perpetuate and kick the ball down the road and eventually you'll pay for it like I did. So this dovetails. When I would get the shots, I would just continue and lift, that's bad enough. But I didn't address the cause of pain. That's the second most egregious thing that I did. Not removing the cause of pain and not having an assessment to understand that, okay, right now, even though flexion plus compression doesn't cause my pain, I know that pre-shot it did, so I needed to continue to respect those limits of my biology and let it heal over time. And then eventually I could get back to flexing my spine a little bit and such. But one of the biggest reasons why people stay in pain off and on for decades, some people that come to us as McGill practitioners, they've failed for decades. I had a guy the other day that's had back pain for 30 years. He never had an assessment and he never removed the cause of pain. Multiple surgeries, multiple injections, medication all day, every day. Sometimes you end up having a story like Ronnie Coleman. If you haven't seen that video, be on the lookout for that. But you got to remove the cause of pain. Big thing to do is to rail against needing to take time off as a lifter. Don't do that. Remove the cause, give yourself permission to rest a little bit, and then slowly rebuild. Looking for the answer to your sleepless nights, sore muscles, and better overall well-being? If so, Power Act Strength CBD has you covered. All of our products are made of CBD isolate and have 0% THC, meaning there are no worries of failing a drug test or the worry of feeling high. With Power Act Strength CBD, we offer a wide range of products and payment options to ensure you have the option that best fits your needs. Don't just take it from me. All of our reviews and client testimonials on our site speak for themselves. You can even get 20% off your order by using code YT1306 at checkout. Go to PowerActStrengthCBD.com to order now so you can get back to sleeping, recovering, lifting, feeling, and being better. The third thing that I did that was the worst for my back is I did reverse hypers in so much frequency and volume and thinking the more that I swung and moved my neck and swung the, the pendulum back and up underneath and got a stretch because I needed to decompress my spine, the worse I got. Also doing silly stretches over and over, trying anything just to get a little bit of relief. Now we know that sometimes a stretch, even a reverse hyper. Now, while it can be inappropriate for a lot of people, Sometimes a reverse hyper is great 
for someone with a compressed spine. With that said, that wasn't me. I had a compressed spine and a litany of other issues. One of the reasons why a reverse hyper can be deceitful, I'm not saying it's a liar, but it can deceive you, is the stretch receptors in the back. Sometimes when you do a stretch and you stretch your lower back out, you might do a Jefferson curl, you might do a reverse hyper, there's a reason why a lot of people report, I felt good after doing the reverse hyper or the stretch or this exercise for about 20 minutes and I felt a significant amount of relief. After that, everything wound up significantly more tight and got worse. Why is that? Well, it's due to the stretch receptors. It sends a signal that lengthens the muscle a little bit and you have a feel good sensation and then it just goes back and gets tight again. And so you end up picking the scab, which I was doing, with the injury mechanism. So even though it might feel good at the time, a lot of people think that, okay, I, I get a little bit of relief for 20 minutes. If it's not relieving for an hour plus and it's fleeting, then it's probably not good for you. So not only was I picking the scam by doing reverse hypers and stretching and going in and doing whatever I wanted to do each day, not ever thinking about my movement patterns, picking the scab again with that one as well. And then the most egregious of all of them was getting medicine injected into my spine and then going and deadlifting seven or 800 pounds on the same day. So what these have in common is all of them are picking the scab, we're not removing the cause, and I didn't allow myself time to heal and then pain, build pain-free capacity. I'm willing to bet that one of these three things apply to you if you're in back pain, and why not give all three a try? Read more about these topics, what we think about injections and my course with them, read more about what it means to move well and remove the cause. Also, what exercises are more spine sparing and which ones are going to be a little bit more difficult on the spine and a little more damaging potentially. Books like Ultimate Back Fitness and Performance and Back Mechanic can be great resources for that. But stay tuned for more content. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember, like, subscribe, share, click the notifications because we drop videos twice a week. We also have a live stream every Friday where I answer your questions. Click below to see the latest video that we uploaded. Also for our products, our CBD, our books that correspond with these videos, it's down in the description. For more information about all things Brian Carroll and Power Rack Strength, go to PowerRackStrength.com. You could book a consult both virtually and in person with me. Enjoy your week and thank you so much.